Prove these statistics. For one thing, the March of Dimes Mothers March on Birth Defects is being conducted through January 26th. And this morning on About Town, we'll learn how your contributions help. And later, we'll talk about how the Coalition on Smoking and Pregnancy is helping. For the first time in Cleveland, the American Cancer Society, the American Lung Association, the American Heart Association, and the March of Dimes have banded together to combat infant mortality through a major stop smoking campaign. We'll be right back after this. United Negro College Fund helps turn dreams into achievements. We want to give our best to people must The games are here. Channel 43 plays favorites. The Great Midday Laughs start at 10.30 with Leave it to Beaver. At 11, the family fun continues with Dick Van Patten and the Bradfords on 8 is Enough. Then at noon, Andy and Barney keep the Mayberry Jailhouse jumping on the Andy Griffith Show. And at 12.30, join John Lanigan for the prize movie. Spend the day with your favorites on WUAB Channel 43. Welcome back to About Town. In this segment, we're going to be talking about the March of Dimes and what they're doing to help prevent birth defects. And I first, I'd like you to meet um, my first guest, Leslie Huntley, who is with the March of Dimes. Welcome to About Town. Good morning, Monica. And my next two guests are Josephine Rothiger. This is Good morning. Mom. <laughs> and Robin. Robin is um, a little Rothiger. <laughs> Robin was born with a birth defect. Um, low weight at birth and she had a lot of problems at that time she was born three months early she weighed one pound 12 ounces at birth and she's almost two years old and this is an example of what the March of Dimes is doing to help but I'd like you to tell us a little bit more Mrs. Rothiger about Robin's situation what happened with Robin when she was born what the situation was okay when Robin was born um, she was three months premature, like you said, and she weighed in at 790 grams, which is a pound and 12 ounces. Um, during her first three months of life, she dropped to like a pound and six ounces. And um, during that first three months also, she had multiple physical problems. Um, she had the hole in her heart, which should have closed, didn't close. And the morning that she was scheduled to have surgery to repair that, it closed on its own. Oh, so she fantastic. lucked out there. Um, she has a chronic lung disease called bronchopulmonary dysplasia, which the bronchioles in her lungs don't function properly, um, which she'll have till she's five. Um, during her first three months, she had an intraventricular hemorrhage where a blood vessel had ruptured in her brain. And um, it was classified as a grade four bleed at the time. Um, but and grade four, May, I take it, is the most serious. Yes, yes, it is. Um, as, as of now, there's no brain damage, um, which she shouldn't have any now from that. But at the time, there was, you know, little chance of her being normal, normal. like she is. Yeah. Yes. And she looks and acts very normal, very yes. much like a two-year-old. <laughs> <laughs> yes, she Very does. much. She pointed to the baby on the screen. She says, there's a baby over there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's her baby. Huh? That baby goes every place we go, right in the mirrors. What about the cost of her being so sick in the hospital? Um, she was in the hospital for six months in the neonatal intensive care unit. Um, the only thing that I can really compare it to because she is an adopted child. We weren't responsible for her medical bills for that six months, but she did have to be readmitted after she had come home from the hospital and she was in a pediatric intensive care and six days there for just the hospital was over $12,000. Mm. So it, it, I couldn't even imagine what six months, what it would have been like. So mm. because there were many blood transfusions that she had to have because children with low birth, um, you know, being so premature and such a low birth weight, she, um, her bilirubin level 
was not cor um, properly balanced and things, and so she had to have you know double volume blood transfusions. Yes, you know, it just gets ex yes. very very expensive. Right. Leslie, what role does the <laughs> <laughs> lost the little bear? What role does the March of Dimes play in a situation like this? All right. Um, Robin's natural mother was a teen. She was 17 when Robin was born. And she did not know she was pregnant, so she had little or, well, no prenatal care. And the important thing that the March of Dimes tries to stress is that you must visit your doctor early and regularly when you're pregnant. Perhaps Robin wouldn't have been born so prematurely if her mother would have taken the precautions she should have taken when she found out she was pregnant. Mm -hmm. So I would say a large majority of our funds that we raise through events like the Mother's March goes directly to public education. So mothers know they must see their doctor regularly. They must stop smoking. They must stop drinking excessive amounts of alcohol for them to have a healthy little baby. Robin's a true blue miracle and that's what we're working so hard for. Mm -hmm. So if mama shouldn't take care of herself, there's still a fighting chance. That's fantastic. What is the most common birth defect? The most common birth defect really would be low birth weight or premature birth. An example of Robin. Right. Now, for instance, Robin had congenital heart problems. This is very common because that the ventricles don't completely close until those last couple months. Therefore, if you're born premature, the baby's heart, God bless you, hasn't had the opportunity for those to close. Mm -hmm. Same thing with the lungs. They haven't correctly formed yet. So the best place for that baby is in mama's body. Mm -hmm. That's what mama's body was made for. To help protect Right. We take it out of that environment, and all of a sudden we try to create the same thing. And although medical technology is good, it hasn't beat mama's body yet. Mm -hmm. You said that the, the major birth defect is low birth rate mm -hmm. weight. Um, we have a list of many of the things that happen when a child is born mm -hmm. a little early. And the first one is congen congenital heart defects. And 20,000 children right. a year There again, born. that is a large majority of those are premature babies. Okay. And then club foot, 9,000 a year in the United yes. States. Now this is interesting because the March of Dimes was instrumental in making the technology available so that now club feet have been corrected with <laughs> surgery. Okay. That's after they're born. Right. Okay. Right. Hip dislocation. Right. What is the, situ the situation? Is this because of the low birth weight or? No, is this is an uh, abnormality at birth. Mm -hmm. The one hip is um, higher than the other. Mm -hmm. So it's, these are some of the more common ones you're used to mm -hmm. thinking of when you see. And RH blood disease. Is this one of the problems that Robin had? No, Robin no, She had a any... blood problem, but or just getting transfusions, they right. see, and the cleft lip and palate. And also, there again, the cleft lip, lip and palate now, through surgery, is very correctable. Mm -hmm. But you want to prevent these things from ever happening. Right, right. That's the mission of the March of Dimes. It's preventing birth defects. And that's why prenatal care is so important and is the major thrust of our Mother's March campaign. Mm -hmm. We're winding it up now. We have, of course, all day today mommy. and Sunday, mommy, mm -hmm. <laughs> all day today and tomorrow still to collect. Mm -hmm. But in the packets, you're given little brochures to pass out to houses with prenatal care information about good nutrition and stopping smoking during pregnancy. Oh, <laughs> Okay, um, stop smoking information. We're going to be talking more about right. that in a, in a few moments. That's very interesting, too, because the March of Dimes was the first health organization to get into the smoking and pregnancy idea. Our focus has always been on the health of the baby. Mm -hmm. And mama smoking, we have definitely found out, does adversely affect the health mm -hmm. of our babies. Mm -hmm. If she wants to get down, she can get down. You want to go for a walk? <laughs> What about, um, what kinds of things has the March of Dimes accomplished? Um, I guess the March of Dimes started out with one disease and it's grown over mm -hmm. the years to include different diseases. Right. We originally went out to, set out to conquer polio in 1958. Of mm -hmm. course, we found a cure for polio. We're the only health organization that found a cause, 
cured it, and then went on to another thing, which is not so unusual as it may seem, because being that uh, birth defects is the number one seri serious problem for uh, children, and polio was a children's disease. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was a natural offshoot. Mm -hmm. The interesting thing, too, about birth defects is that can be anything from color blindness to some of the most serious um, birth defects that we saw on the screen. Mm -hmm. um, anything that you're born with that's an abnormality at birth can be considered a birth defect. So it affects many of us. Some of the learning disabilities that we're now finding in our children are um, directly from birth. <laughs> She's having a good time. Robin, you want to come over here? <laughs> what about the, the mothers um, that were volunteering? Mm -hmm. They have been going around for a couple of weeks mm -hmm. and how much money are they trying to collect? We will have close to 30,000 marchers, thank you all out there, that mm -hmm. they're doing a great job. And we hope to collect $350,000. <laughs> <we're> <laughs> <laughs> You're trying to collect? $350,000, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. which um, really, when you think about how much it costs to take care of these children in neonatal intensive care units, it's just a drop in the bucket mm -hmm. compared to what we put out in trying to save our babies. And we can take the money that we raise and put it into preventing. It's much less expensive to prevent a birth defect than it is to treat one after the baby's born. What about um, research? Mm -hmm. Is there anything going on right now a special breakthrough that you're going to be announcing soon? Oh, geez, that's so hard to say. Well, I think one of the most interesting um, breakthroughs they're coming through with right now is they're on the verge of coming up with um, ways of preventing women to go into premature labor. There mm -hmm. are, for instance, if you were a mother with several miscarriages, there mm -hmm. is a chance now that we can prevent that from happening and make help you to go full term mm -hmm. and I think that's what you're going to see in the next couple of years mm -hmm. Robin you come over here? <laughs> she's the completely healthy little little uh, two-year-old here headstands over there be careful Robin come on over come on <laughs> Okay, fine. Well, we're going to take a break right now, and we'll be back with more of About Town in a few moments. And we're going, at that time, we're going to be talking about, more about the um, March of Dimes and a, a coalition of a lot of um, organizations who are trying to stop people from smoking, which will also help combat birth defects. We'll be right back. Alcoholism, the liquid mask. You may not watch a more important show all year. Monday at 8 on Channel 43. This is Eddie. He lives in a neighborhood where job opportunities don't come knocking at his door very often. But now local community organizations, with the help of IBM and others, have set up over 200 free job training centers. Some for careers in computer operations, others in business, and to thousands of people like Eddie. It's the one thing they thought they would never have. A chance to make it. about town. As I mentioned when the show first started, we're going to be talking about being born as a non-smoker. There's a coalition of uh, four agencies in the Cleveland area, the Lung Association, the Cancer Society, the Heart Association, and the March of Dimes have banded together to form a coalition to stop smoking during pregnancy. And with me, I have the chairman of that coalition, Dr. Janet Sachs. She's a pediatrician and she works with um, Kaiser Permanente. Welcome to About Town. Thank you, Monica. What um, are the effects of smoking? <laughs> I'm gonna get right down to it. What are the effects of smoking during pregnancy? The effects are very dramatic. Uh, they affect the growing fetus and result in a baby that's not as healthy as the baby would have been if the mother didn't smoke. In the first segment, we were talking with the people from the March of Dimes, and they were saying that low birth weight is probably the number one um, birth defect. Yes. How a much large, does A large smoking... percentage of low birth weight babies uh, come from mothers who smoke. 
And the reason for this is that the nicotine in the cigarette constricts the blood vessels and closes them down, uh, the blood supply to the placenta and the uterus. There's a very the, nice... The um, coalition put together a chart that um, explains this very well. And if we could take a look at the flip chart as you explain what's going on, then right. that would be um, very helpful. Like I said, the Smoking and Pregnancy Coalition. And, and this is what you were talking about. Yes. Right? When, when a mother who's pregnant smokes, the nicotine in the um, cigarette constricts or shuts down the blood supply, uh, which includes oxygen and food, to the growing fetus. Mm -hmm. And uh, the baby doesn't get as much food or oxygen as it should. And this is just another picture of the baby in the uterus and mm -hmm. the blood supply to the baby. Mm -hmm. Carbon monoxide from cigarettes is a poison gas. It's the same gas that comes out the exhaust of your car. Some people use it to commit suicide. And babies who grow in a uterus uh, that is supplied by increased amounts of carbon monoxide have slow carbon monoxide poisoning during the nine months of pregnancy. They're born not as smart as they would have been if the mother didn't smoke. They're born small for their gestational age. That means if a baby is born premature to a mother who smokes, that baby will be smaller than a premature baby uh, of that age, mm -hmm. gestational age. If they're born full term to a mother who smokes, they'll weigh less than the average full term baby. Mm -hmm. There are other things that happen during pregnancy when a mother smokes. Uh, she may miscarry. Uh, I mentioned premature birth al already. The baby may be born without the ability to breathe. Mm -hmm. um, and that's because during the nine months of pregnancy, when the baby gets an increased amount of carbon monoxide, that goes to the baby's developing respiratory center and modifies it so that when the baby has to experience life outside the uterus, he's not able to do so. The incidence of sudden infant death syndrome is much higher in babies whose mothers have smoked during pregnancy for the same reason their respiratory center is not able to cope with a benign, mild upper respiratory infection mm -hmm. that most babies can throw off. Mm -hmm. This also mentions stillbirth, is that? Yes, well, the, the placenta which nourishes the baby is affected by the nicotine and the carbon monoxide and many of the other um, uh, um, drugs in cigarettes which include um, cyanide and cadmium and lead and this damages the placenta, so it can't do a good job of nourishing the baby. It's all pretty straightforward. It's all been proven over and over again by thousands of top-notch researchers. What are the effects of stopping smoking while you're pregnant or stopping the earlier you stop? Is the the earlier you stop, the better. It's best if you can stop before the baby is conceived. But if you stop at any time during pregnancy, you're improving the baby's nourishment. Mm-hmm. Um, what is the same. It's basically, it's kind of hard to read backwards. <laughs> uh, um, quit smoking. The earlier the better. Increase mm -hmm. your chances of having a healthy baby. Mm -hmm. And um, let's go through the rest of it. Basically, um, you were also mentioning that after the child is born that it's oh, important. Oh, that's, that's also a very important time. Uh, a baby's lungs are still growing in the early years of life. And if those lungs are exposed to the father or the mother or the babysitter smoking. Uh, you can damage those lungs. Uh, some babies develop asthma, some babies will get pneumonia or bronchitis uh, because they are in a smoking atmosphere. Mm -hmm. That's called passive smoking. That's basically. called passive smoke. The smoke at the tip of the cigarette has more dangerous drugs than the smoke that goes into the smoker's lungs. And that's because the smoke at the tip of the cigarette is not filtered. Mm -hmm. And so the smoke in the air for passive smokers, people who don't smoke but are in an atmosphere of smoke, we get more carbon monoxide, we get more um, of the lead and the cadmium and the cyanide uh, and the nicotine than goes into the smoker's mouth. Now, of course, the smoker gets both mainstream and sidestream smoke. But um, it's been shown also that uh, for the spouse of a smoker, the non-smoking spouse is twice as likely to get lung cancer as if her husband didn't smoke. Mm -hmm. Interesting. What about stopping, you know, you say 
you're pregnant, stop smoking. But you know, people are not supposed to smoke anyway. I mean, it's bad for you no matter if you're pregnant or not. That's right. It's difficult to stop smoking. People are addicted to smoking, addicted to nicotine, addicted to it's very psychological tough. It's or very physical tough. or whatever. How do they stop? Well, it's been shown that most people who do stop do so on their own. I think it's a good idea, though, uh, to start out with some help. And you can get that kind of help either privately from a psychologist uh, or from any of the health agencies you mentioned, the American mm -hmm. Heart Association, the American Lung Association, and the American Cancer Society all have wonderful programs to help you stop smoking. Mm -hmm. I would like to mention um, that 350,000 people die every year directly due to cigarettes. Um, that is more uh, than heroin addicts, that is more than car accidents. Um, cigarettes are the number one uh, cause of death in this country, and it's preventable. That's 1,000 people a day in this country a die of unnecessary heart attacks, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, uh, lung cancer. 90% of lung cancer is directly due to cigarette smoke and to the um, perinatal mortality. Perinatal means the period around birth. Uh, there are many delivery room emergencies that I personally have attended where the uh, placenta is delivered before the baby. That's called placenta previa, and there's a lot of bleeding associated with that. Another placental um, uh, anomaly is um, uh, abruptio placenta, where the placenta separates from the uterus before the baby is born and the baby's oxygen supply is cut off, the baby's asphyxiated. And these are two emergency room deliveries that occur much more frequently uh, in conditions where the mother is a moderate to heavy smoker. Mm -hmm. As a pediatrician, what other types of um, situations do you deal with on a, on a regular basis I see a lot as of, a result yes. of this? Asthma is much more serious in the child under one if that child is in a smoking home. Um, you see, when the young baby whose lungs are still growing breathes in the smoke, the smoke stops the cilia from working. The cilia are those tiny little hairs that are beating upward to remove dirt, um, germs, uh, mucus, and the cilia stop working. So that baby is predisposed to pneumonia, to bronchitis, and to wheezing. Mm -hmm. That's the number one. Is there, are there other common Yes, we see a lot saying? more accidents um, in um, a accident? cigarette smoking home. The home's on fire. Somebody ah. goes to sleep smoking. Yes. A toddler may come around while you're uh, holding your cigarette. We've seen eye burns and skin burns, sometimes abuse, sometimes accidents. But there are a lot more accidents in the home uh, from various causes when the parents smoke. Mm -hmm. Tell me about the coalition. Well, the coalition um, is a very exciting and wonderful thing. About a year ago, I was asked by the Heart Association to be part of a coalition of the four health agencies, the American Heart Association, the American Lung Association, the American Cancer Society, and the March of Dimes. Uh, they asked me to be part of that and to set up a program where we would educate women of childbearing age in our community about the dangers of smoking. We wanted to prevent all these premature births, all these babies who were born asphyxiated. Um, and on our board, in addition to the agencies, were pediatricians, obstetricians, family practitioners, a wonderful Cleveland Clinic psychologist, Dr. Gary Donelsky, and many other um, personnel, including Diana Tittle, the editor of Northern Ohio Live. Uh, we worked together to produce the shirt, shirt you saw at the mm -hmm. beginning of the program, and we put together a packet that included the flip chart, mm -hmm. but it includes much, uh, many other things mm -hmm. uh, in the way of education. We're going to take these uh, packets this year to all of the obstetricians and all of the obstetrical clinics in the area mm -hmm. and educate them so that they can educate their patients about the dangers of smoking. Next year, we're going to take it to all the surrounding um, counties as well as Cuyahoga mm -hmm. and do the same thing. What about um, the uh, lower income areas of Cleveland? We're definitely going to include the lower socioeconomic areas. We'll be going into Huff, the Huff Norwood, the Glenville. We'll be going to all of those um, neighborhood clinics and uh, educating their personnel so they can educate the pregnant mothers mm -hmm. uh, 
not to start smoking. Mm -hmm. uh, I would like to mention one other important statistic. Um, in the past 20 years, the only area of our population that has increased smoking are young women um, between the ages of 12 and 17. Mm -hmm. And this year, for the first time, um, more women are dying of lung cancer than breast cancer. The incubation period of lung cancer is about 20 years of smoking. It varies, uh, and it happens sooner in some people, later in others, but it's been 20 years. Mm -hmm. And during that time, young women of that age um, span, between 12 and 17, have doubled their incidence of smoking. And these are some of the women who are giving birth. Mm -hmm. And they will, if they're not giving birth at that young age, they probably will be Yes. A few years later. Yes, and they'll be addicted. Nicotine is, is extremely addicting. It's mm -hmm. very tough to stop. Mm -hmm. mm. Much easier not to start. Yeah. And these or organizations are helping them stop smoking. Where are you getting the money for this major ah, campaign? Well, I was very delighted when at the end of our year of uh, working hard, we presented this program to the Cleveland Foundation, and they have just funded us uh, in the tune of $96,000 so we can cover... Uh, seven counties uh, surrounding Cuyahoga County mm -hmm. and uh, spread the word about the dangers of uh, smoking. Okay, and so you won't be actually going out to speak. You'll be sending these information packets uh, The to Cleveland Perinatal Network uh, will be using. It's, it's mm -hmm. a large group of nurses. Uh, they have their center at University Hospitals in mm -hmm. Cleveland, and they will be some of the personnel distributing these uh, flip charts and other educational materials, including the cute little t-shirt that you shot. Okay, so. we're going to take a break and we'll be back to talk a little bit more about the coalition. This is WUAB Channel 43, Lorraine, Cleveland. Blood. It's this simple. Before someone can get blood, someone has to give blood. Give. Contact your nearest donor facility. You have it in you to give. This morning on About Town, we've been talking about birth defects and one of the major causes of um, birth defects, smoking and pregnancy. There's a coalition consisting of the American Heart Association, the American Lung Association, the Cancer Society, and the March of Dimes. You can get more information about this coalition by calling 791-7500. And Dr. Sachs, do you have any last bit of advice for people who are trying to stop smoking? Well, it's tough. But nothing's impossible if you really want to stop and you realize the importance of it to your life and to your children, uh, you can do it. Just because you've tried and failed doesn't mean doesn't you give mean up. You give mean, up. That means you okay. try again. Okay. Well, thank you very much for appearing on About Town. And, of course, we'll be back with About Town again next Saturday morning. So be sure to join us. This is WUAB, Channel 43, Lorraine, Cleveland.